From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. I cannot believe that we are actually getting into 2017, can you? Last year went so very, very quickly. And I trust that already this has been a very happy new year for you. And as you enter in even farther into the new year, that God's blessing will be upon you and upon your families. And because of the importance of what happened last year, we've decided to do this program also, a review of 2016. It was dynamite, wasn't it? The things that went on last year are so very, very important to what's going to happen this year. So we're going to just quickly, again, go through some of the most important things that happened. And this one, I couldn't believe what happened with England, could you? Brexit. They decided to leave, England decided to leave the European Union. Now, what effect will that have on all of Europe? It will. And uh, Jack is going to explain that on this program. Once again, the gathering nuclear storm. How many times have I asked Jack Van Impey, are we going to be using nuclear weapons? And he answers it so very, very well with the Word of God. Nuclear storm out there. It could happen, friends. And then Bishop Lauv and Ezekiel's prophecy. Well, how in the world does uh, Ezekiel's prophecy pertain to today? It has to do with the greatest war that ever took place, the Battle of Armageddon. Now, is it already beginning to show uh, that it's gathering together? Oh, there you see it, Ezekiel's prophecy. My, oh, my. Poor Israel. They seem to be lifting themselves up right now, but, you know, that's where it's going to happen. The Battle of Armageddon, right there in the Valley of Megiddo, just outside, not too far from Jerusalem. But the Lord said that Israel will be an everlasting nation. But we'll discuss that also. And I would like to just fill you in on Jack's progress. He's doing so well, friends. Has he had a limitation on his ministry? No. Every time, and I spend many hours a day with him, every time that I enter the hospital, they always say, oh, your husband knows the Bible so well. <laughs> I tell you, I think everybody in the hospital knows him and that uh, there are many who are going to start watching the program who didn't before. So keep him in your prayers. He's doing very, very well, and we anticipate that he will be back with us very, very soon. Thank the Lord. It was not uh, a ball that could have hurt him even more uh, limitations on his body, but uh, thank the Lord he's going to be back with us. So pray for him. And uh, the next time that you tune in, perhaps we'll see him right there in his chair. God bless you as you watch this program, The Review of 2016. The world is still focused, if you know, on what Britain has done. Just split its ties with the world's biggest market, the EU. Whoa. Here you see it, Britain's big mess, how Brexit will affect the UK, the EU, and what? The world, wow. There you go. And the United Kingdom, a nation revolts against the elite. Again, coming apart, the decline of the European Union. Well, we're gonna focus on that, believe me, in just a moment. Brexit quake reaches the United States. Americans say Britain's split from the EU reflects anger that smolters in the USA, too. And here you see another one, disappointed remain activists in London. Oh, my word. The Brexit earthquake shakes the world, and I think that everybody is talking about it. Well, somebody that really is talking about it is, of course, Putin of Russia. 
He is really concerned, and look why. Kremlin gets flashback of Soviet collapse in Brexit fallout. What? Flashback of Soviet collapse? There's a big upheaval in the UK, and he's concerned about it. Time magazine, the imperialist Vladimir Putin, the Russian, uh, increasingly isolated president, is on a mission to restore his country's lost empire. He wants to build it again. He wants to be number one in the world. What does Putin want? All right, not money, not power, not territory or revenge. The Russian strongman is after bigger game, believe me. And I'm going to go to Jack in just a moment, and I'm going to ask him, really, what does President Putin want? If he doesn't want money and, and gain and all the rest, or even revenge, what does he want? Jack, what is Putin really after? Rex Sala, there's a prophecy in this Bible that's over 2,500 years old, and it's about the last great war, Armageddon, which will be hit up by a nation called Russia. And for years, the Soviet Socialist Republic was powerful, and now they have lost it. And Putin says, I'm going to regain it, and he's going to do everything he can to get it back, ladies and gentlemen. Now, it was in 1713 that Bishop Lowthey said there's going to be a great war, and the nation heading it up will be called Rosh or Versia in Greek or Russia in English. That's 303 years ago he said it, but the prophecy was 2,500 years old. Oh, this is exciting. This is the greatest prophecy in history, and it couldn't happen because these nations weren't in existence anymore, but now they are. There was no Israel for 2,000 years, but it's there now, and they play a great part. Let's see what it is. The Bible teaches in Daniel chapter 2, verses 40, 41, and 44, and chapter 7, verses 7 and 20, and in Revelation 12, 13, and 17, that there would be 10 nations coming together for the new world order. And who were they? Here they are. Oh, this is exciting. 1947, they had Benelux join, and that's Belgium, the Netherlands, which is Holland, and Luxembourg. Then in 1973, England, where all the problem has just been, and of course, Ireland with them. And then in 81, number 10, Greece, the ten toes of Daniel's image. It was here. People said Jesus could come at any time, but it grew to 28 nations. So they got together and re-established everything, and they've created a 10-nation world order. Well, Jack, I've got the 10-division world uh, empire in front of me here, and I'm going to put it on the screen in just a moment. But let's deal with a few nations that are lining up together right now for that world empire. Russia, Brussels, at NATO expansion in Eastern Europe. Well, Russia's called NATO's move a threat to the stability of Europe. Moscow turns to Southeast Asia for new allies. Well, you know, they've been buddies for a That's long time. That's China. Yes, absolutely. Russia and China together. European super state to be unveiled. EU nations to be morphed into one post-Brexit. Can you believe that? And then going on, ISIS amassing an army on Europe's border. Again, no wonder they're very concerned about that. The EU Foreign Affairs Minister, Europe needs an EU army. Well, here's something. Relax. Brexit isn't the end of, okay, the new world order. And here's why. And here we are. Yes, I'm going to put this on the screen right now. The 10 division world empire. Oh my, oh my. Look how they've done this. It's amazing. Well, America's first here. Number one, America, Canada, and Mexico. Number two, South America. Number three, Australia and New Zealand. Four, Western Europe, Eastern Europe five, Japan six, South Asia seven, Central Asia eight, nine, North Africa and the Middle East, and 10, the remainder of Africa. Well, do you see what that uh, headline said? World empire 
it includes the whole world. We're included. So is Russia, and she's very, very uh, concerned that she wants to be the number one power in this world. So she's raising her fist right now and saying, China, join with me. We want to take over. Jack, do, is, does Russia really want to take over, do you think? Oh, and they are going to, Rex. Yes. It's going to become the mightiest power in the world once again very soon. Sad to say. But in Ezekiel 38 and 39, we have the whole picture. It says, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. All right. Gog is the end time ruler, which probably could be Putin. And then the Scythians became the Megagites and then called Russians. Meshach is Moscow, Tobol is Tobolsk, southwest of Siberia. So it's all there in Russia. And they call for help. And that's China, Revelation 16, 12, who comes down. And that's Daniel 11, 44. The North, Russia, and the East, China getting together for one of the greatest and most powerful armies in history. Then in Ezekiel 38, 5, you have Persia, which is Iran, Ethiopia, Libya, Lebanon, and you have Tagarma. That's Turkey, where the problem is right now. Who will go along with them? All part of the 10 World Foundation. Man, Jesus is about to come. Now, here's why it will be in our lifetime. First of all, they invade Israel. The whole war is fought as they move down to that country. There was no Israel to invade till 1948. What? The Romans took the Jews out of there in 70 AD, and 2,000 years passed. And they raised their flag in 48, saying, this is the six-pointed star of David, and we're Israel, and we're back. There's one more thing. They have to be in control of Jerusalem, and that has happened, and that's what all the fuss is about. So we are ready for the greatest war in history, and it's all happened just in the last few years. It only started, according to Bishop Lowthey of London, England, when he said it's coming and said it 303 years ago. Wow. We've lived to see that things form. Now, Israel is the point, yes. Are you listening? Chapter 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice, and 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, 29. 18 times, and they're here! <laughs> and there can't be a war there with Russia until they were there fighting over Jerusalem with the Palestinians. It's still here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man, Jesus is about to break to the blue. We need to get ready. We need to get saved. It's going to be an atomic war. Look it up. Psalm 97, 3, Isaiah 66, 15, Ezekiel 20, 47, Joel chapter 2, verses 3 and 30, Zephaniah 1, 18, Malachi 4, 1, and Revelation 9, 18. By these three was the third part of men slain. Fire, smoke. Brimstone, Atomic War. Bishop Lau of London, England. I'm going to put this on the screen right now. And Jack, would you please read what he said? You're talking about oh, it. Oh, this is something. Bishop Lau of London, England, proclaimed the message of Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39 over 300 years ago in 1713, stating Ezekiel's prophecy without question relates to the latter ages of the world when Israel shall return to their own land, 1948. Ra signifies those inhabitants of Cynthia from whence the Russians drive their name. This formidable invasion of the land of Israel, God will defeat. The Persians from Iraq and Afghanistan from the east, the Ethiopians from the south, and the Moors, Libyans from the west shall join with Russia in this invasion and to see the great Wall Street journals say it's coming. Folks, you're going to get shocked now, but listen, if there are ever a time you need to be ready for the coming of the Lord, it's now. 
Oh, absolutely, Jack. And you know, something came to my mind this week that actually the nuclear policies in this country rest upon the shoulders of those that are in the highest offices, of course. What they think about nuclear weapons and the rest rests on their shoulders, but unfortunately, I think, the nuclear realities uh, seem very dim sometimes to those that are in power. Take a look at this, a gathering nuclear storm. Do you see who they are? There's Iran and, of course, whoa, Russia. And there is the North Korea and also China. I'm going to talk about those four in just a moment. But going on here, is the sun setting on America? That's a question mark. We better pay attention, especially those in the highest offices. Congressional report warns of growing war threats. Congress. Yes, we better, better listen. Now, Jack, is that where all of this is going? We've read about nuclear weapons before, but do you really feel that they're formulating right now? And those four countries are very important. I want to deal with each of them in a moment. Rick Sellen, not only does the Bible name those four countries as we're going to see, but the invasion takes place against a place called Israel 18 times, Ezekiel 38 and 39. And there was no Israel since 70 A.D. when they were taken out of their land. But they came back in 1948. And God says in Matthew 24, 32, when you see the fig tree, Israel blossoming, comes back as a nation, 1948, and the battleground becomes Jerusalem. That's when I'm going to come. And ladies and gentlemen, it's all happened. It's all ready to go. And when your newspapers and your congressmen are warning you, you better think twice. The gathering nuclear storm. I want to give a larger picture of the four men right now. And there they are, of course. But I would like to jump down, if you will, Iran, China, Russia, and North Korea. I'd like to jump down to Russia first, because they have been uh, right on the cutting edge, and that's what this is all about. From the very beginning, Russia creating cutting edge universal nuclear battleship. Well, you know, they want to take over what's out there in, in the seas. You can't do this, you can't do that, and I'll fly by if you do. My, oh, my. Russia warplanes bomb Syria from Iranian base. Well, they're coming together with uh, some of the buddies over there also. They're warplanes going on. Now, I have said this before. That's another picture that I showed you, a Chinese leader. Russia and China have been buddies for a long, long time. And they're coming together even closer. China is disturbing new nuclear buildup. Oh dear, just like Russia. China flight tests new multiple warhead missiles. Oh, they're saying, you're not gonna get ahead of us. We're gonna stay even with you. So I would like, if Jack would please, to address these two countries. They've always been buddies, they always will be, and they're gonna be on the same side when Armageddon happens. They're gonna come down from the north, but they're gonna be buddies, they're gonna to stay together. Russia and China, the two pictures there, Jack. They come down from the north and the east, Russia north, China east, and that's Daniel 11:44. For what? The battle of the latter years and the latter days. Ezekiel 38, verses 8 and 16. It's here! First of all, Russia, Ezekiel 38, 1. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the Russian prince of Moscow, and Tobolsk. And the Bible goes on to teach that they will head up Meshach and Tubal, Meshach is Moscow, and Tubal is Tubal, southwest of Siberia, but in Russian possession. And China joins with them. In just this last three days, China and Russia have signed an agreement to work together for what's coming in the future, the great battle of Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16. I don't have to say now, uh, 
this is my idea, and people say, oh, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Seventy years I've preached it. Three million have come to Christ. This is God's word. Now, where do we get China and North Korea? Revelation 16, 12. The sixth angel poured out his bowl of vial upon the great river Euphrates, so that the waters there were dried up, so that the kings of the sun rising from the east shall trouble them. And that is China and North Korea with their atomic weaponry. What? That's right. And how is it possible that the Euphrates River is going to dry up? Because in Tagarma, which is Turkey, Ezekiel 38, 6, they now have all the equipment, I'll tell you about it next week, to dry up the Euphrates River by pushing a few buttons in all of their new inventions. Wow, what an hour to be alive. And remember this, none of it could happen until a fig tree blossom, the fig tree is Israel, Joel 1, 7 and Hosea 9, 10, and they became a nation 48. So none of these prophecies could ever happen until they were there because the war is against Israel. And for 2,000 years, there was no Israel until 1948, and the battle is over Jerusalem, and they only captured that 19 years later. So there it is, the battleground. What? Are you ready? Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice in 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, 29, 18 times. We're there now. Every sign is here. The Wall Street Journal was right. Congress is right. It's coming. Be prepared as Americans because there's another guy there called Iran. And that guy is the most vicious man alive. He's made the dirtiest deals with the president of the United States of America. He's not keeping his promises. And our president even did something. It's a shame. He loaded him with $1,700,000,000 secretly. What hope? What a blessed promise that God has given to us that we don't have to live in fear. We don't have to anticipate bad things that are coming. We can anticipate something good that's coming. Are you prepared for what is coming? Are you prepared for the wonderful appearance of our Savior? And if he does come, are you ready? I ask that so often. I asked a friend the other day, are you ready for the coming of the Lord? You know, so many say, what are you talking about? How good it is to know that the Lord is coming back to take his children home. And we don't have to be afraid of what's going on around us if we're ready. Is he in your heart? That's how you get ready. Have you prayed, Lord, come into my heart? Forgive me of my sins. That's why he came. He wants to be your savior. Will you pray this prayer right now with Jack? Lord, forgive me of my sins. Be my savior. Jack. Oh, look at Jesus there on the cross. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And because of that precious shed holy blood untainted, we can be cleansed from every sin we've ever committed. Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the suffering. Thank you for that precious blood that can take away my sin right now. If I trust in you and ask you to do it, Jesus, come into my heart. Save me today. In your holy name I pray this. Amen. Amen. I trust you prayed that prayer. How wonderful it is to know that the Lord will cleanse us of anything. You know, we had a letter from someone on death row because he was convicted of murder. And he said, I accepted the Lord. Now I'm ready to die. I know I've been forgiven. Anything in your life, if you prayed that prayer, you've been forgiven. Please let me know, will you? And there's my address, and I will send you this little book of first steps in a new direction. You can walk a new life with him. Are you unhappy with the one you have? Well, with the Lord in your heart, you've got a new life. The first steps in a new direction.
Mm, my, oh, my. Will we ever have peace? Yes, we will. And we're going to leave you with some good news in just a moment. Oh, how good it is to look forward to peace on earth. Well, friends, we have an offer for you that I'm so excited about. The Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible. Please, take a look at the promo. Presenting the third edition of the Jack Vanapie Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Vanapie Ministries. Dr. Vanapie has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Vanapie Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Vanapie used to categorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Vanapi, Your Future, an A to Z Index to Prophecy, Revelation Revealed, Verse by Verse, and Daniel Final End Time Mysteries Unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. We also have a brand new accompanying uh, gift for you with your order, Jack. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, when I did this Bible, I never thought of this idea, but it came to me since. There are over 2,000 to 3,000 Bible verses that have to do with prophecy. But even with my Bible, you have to read the whole thing to find where they are. So I did something. I started a book with Genesis through Revelation, every major book, and every time a verse is found, you could have a Bible in your possession that's 200 years old, and this will tell you where they're all found because it's never changed. From Genesis to Revelation, oh, man, you could find every prophecy in one day if you just sat down with this little booklet from one end of the Bible to the other. Jack, I'm so excited about that. It's wonderful. So make the order right away. There's the 100 number and there's the address. And we'll be in closing this wonderful complete guide to Bible prophecy. Whoa. I'm so happy to say the Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible and also my gift with your order. And here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order your Prophecy Bible. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free, 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Vanapi Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. What a marvelous treasure. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so much, Chuck, and I just want to say it's a great gift for any occasion and the complete guide to every prophecy verse in the Bible in the mail with your order. And I just want to say that we need to keep our faith in the Lord today, don't we? So a good question is this. Is your faith ancient history or a current event? Certainly we need to keep it right next to our heart. Look forward to being your home again next week. Until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.